So hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever you're watching from. Today we are going to talk on crowd operations and we already have your instructor on the call. Today we have Amos Ido, I hope I got that right. He's a software engineer from Greater Accra, Ghana. So welcome Amos. Thank you. All right. So um, the class is all yours. If we have, if, we, if the students have any question, I'll display them on your screen so you can see it. Okay. okay. Sure. All right. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Thank you, Amaka. So, hello, everyone. Um, so, as Amaka said, today we are going to be um, looking at crowd operations with Mongo and Mongoose, right? And I mean, a simple introduction I can give about Mongoose is Mongoose is an um, object document mapper. And what that means is usually when working with um, databases, we would want the model of the databases in our the model of elements in our, in our databases to map directly to objects that we work with um, in our code. And Mongoose allows us to um, do that very, very easy, right? And sorry. Um, okay, so Mongoose is like the go-to ORM when starting to learn about Mongo. I, I know usually that's from for me, and I know a lot of people also um, go, go to the same thing. When learning about MongoDB, usually the first thing that you get to learn about is Mongoose. And it's very simple. It's, it's because Mongoose is very, very um, easy to get started with, right? So before I get started, we are going to look at um, our topic for the day, which is CRAD, right? And as some of us might know, or probably all of us know that CRAD stands for create, read, update, and delete, right? And this is simple. When we have entities in our database, and then we want to do some this some form of operations on them. So for example, if we have an e-commerce website, and then we want to create new products, want to read um, new, uh, want to read the products that we have already in our database, want to update a specific product and want to delete a specific product, right? So that's why, that's how come we came about with these um, acronyms. So in the REST API world, right, we have some specific verbs that are associated to these various um, crowd operations. Um, and the most common ones that are going to see are get, post, put, touch, and delete, right? And as you already might have guessed, the posts, the patch, and the put are what are used to, and the post is used to create an element in our database. And to read, we usually use the get. And then for the put and patch, there's some slight difference between them, which I'll explain soon. And the delete verb is also used for deleting um, elements in our in our database. So let's go to the difference between put and patch. So there's some slight difference between um, a put and, then, and a patch operation. So let's say we have a product in our database, right? And the product has an ID of one, it has a name of Let's say shit. And then it has a price of 
I don't know, 27 units, right? When we, when we talk of a put operation, what a put operation is going to do is, it's going to take the entire payload that we have. So example, if you want to update just the price, we are supposed to send request that contains this whole thing and then the change, right? So here, let's say we want to change the price to 50. A put request is going to take all this and then make the change. And if we send a put request without this other this field, for example, this name field, and it's going to override this name field and make it empty. So that's 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 the issue of with the puts. And for the patch request, it's a bit different. That one we can decide to only send specific elements that we want to update. So for example, we want to update the price to 50. We just send a payload with 50 and then it um, overrides the whole um, payload for us, the, the elements in the database for us. So that's the difference between the put, the, the put and the patch. So these are some of the things that we need to, I mean, take notes of when we are building um, REST APIs with um, crowd operations. And then the delete operation, once we have a delete operation, it means that every request that goes to that endpoint means I want to delete a specific element. And then the get also is used for getting either a single element or a number of elements. Yeah, so that's, that's some short introduction. So I'm not going to talk much because a lot of um, what I can see is probably out there on the internet. So I would like us to go like, straight to what will be working on today, which is a very simple application. Um, it's actually a, a simple clone of Google CrowdSource. I don't know whether, um, Amaka, am I able to ask questions on the live, um, on the live feed? So let me just continue. So here we have Google hello, Crowd. So. Hello, Amos. Yeah, hello, Amaka. Yeah, you can ask questions or drop their answers in the chat and I'll let you know. Oh, okay. okay. Hello, Amos. All right, thank you. All right, so we are going to clone something very simple from Google CrowdSource. And Google CrowdSource is a simple application where, I mean, people all around the world can create accounts over there and then help Google label some data, a lot of data. So they have audio data, they have image data and so on and so forth. And then the purpose of this is to help them train their algorithms, their machine learning algorithms to make them better. So we can look at, at an, an example over here. So here it's asking, does this image contain baseball? Yes or no, All right? So I can decide to click on yes. Does this image contain baseball? No. Does it contain baseball? Yes. Yes. All right. So that's how this application is. And if you take this simple application, what is actually doing in the background is um, crowd operations, right? So when I open this particular page, this browser makes a request to the, um, I mean, whatever server that is behind this, and then it grabs a single question and a single image, right? And then it brings the response. That's a get. And when we click a no or a yes, we are creating a new response on the server, right? And that's a post request. Right. And over here, they don't have any way to delete or to update. Right. But we can still look at that. So this 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 is an example of a simple CRUD application. And I would want us to build a simple clone of this 
application, right, in, in Node.js. So you are going to look at this application over here. So I built a very simple clone of this. And this one, we are going to and build the backend for this application that is going to help us annotate text for sentiment analysis. So sentiment analysis is basically having a text and being able to determine whether it contains a, a positive sentiment or a negative sentiment or a neutral sentiment. And what it simply means is, for example, if you have a store, an online um, application store, an online shop, where people can buy stuff and leave reviews would want to have an algorithm like or an AI that can grab this text and then tell us whether it's positive um, sentiments or negative sentiments. But before the AI can do that, the AI needs data, right? And that data should contain a lot of examples of positive, neutral, and negative um, sentiments. And with that, it will be able to um we'll be able to train this algorithm and when it sees new or similar forms of reviews it will be able to tell us the sentiment so this application that we are going to build is basically going to show us just like the way we have over here when we when we send a response we get a random image right so here we are going to program this in such a way that when we click either positive neutral or negative we are going to um, create um, new labels in the back end such that we can use these labels to train our um, ai right so currently it's not working and it's training us errors but hopefully by the end of this lesson we'll be able to remove these errors and learn a bit about mongo mongo and crowd operations so if you have any question, like Amaka said, you can just um, ask. So I'm going to start a new project. And I'll call it crowdsource backend. So with this new project, we are going to install our dependencies for this project so then we add express calls And then we create our main application file. Hello, Emos. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Please, can you zoom in on your code editor? Um, 
Is it uh, better? The, yeah, this is better. Yes, it is. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you. And we have costs because of our front end application. Here. Yeah, we don't have a start script yet, so we have to add a start script. This node upload.js. So now we have application running on this port. So we can go on and look at Mongo. So before I continue, there are a number of ways I can guess that they will be um, working with um, Mongo locally on our devices. So you can go to the Mongo DB website. And they have a free version here that you can they have a free version here that you can install right but it's going to take some time and usually i prefer to do all this on docker right which is very very easy and straightforward so i already have a docker compose file prepared and i'm going to share this after the lesson so So over here, I'm going to create a Docker compose.yml file, and then we paste this inside. So basically, what what this is going to what this is going to do for us is it's going to grab the latest version of Mongo and then spin up a Docker container for us very very easily, and then from there straight ahead we have mongo working without any sweat so but you would need to have docker installed so let me let me write this here And depending on the platform that you are, whether Windows or Linux or Mac, once you go to the Docker um, website, the documentation is going to show you how to install um, Docker and Docker Compose. But I'm not going to do that here since it's out of um, scope. So once we have this Docker Compose, the YML file, all we have to do is run this command, Docker Compose app. Yeah. So as you can see, if this is the first time you are running it, it's going to take some time and download the latest uh, Mongo image. But if this is not the first time, then it's going to um, take just a, a few seconds, just like now. So we have the Mongo container created for us. So if we check Docker, we can actually see the name over here. Right. 
our crowdsource backend, and then we have our MongoDB container. So that's that's it. That's it. We finished setting up MongoDB. And there's another tool which is very, very useful. It's a GUI tool which is very useful in um, viewing whatever data that you have in Mongo, which is called Mongo Compass. MongoDB Compass. You can also come to this website, MongoDB Compass, and then download the software. And with this, we can easily view whatever data that we have in MongoDB. Okay. So I have my MongoDB Compass opened here, right? And currently, our MongoDB is listening on the local host, and this is the default port for Mongo. So once I connect to this, it's able to connect. And by default, it has these three um, documents, sorry, these three databases available for us. So that's it. So now the next thing we have to do is install Mongoose. Yeah, so we have Mongoose installed. And then we require it over here. And then we try to connect to a Mongo database to see whether everything is working. So we just have a mongoose dot connect, and then we pass in the string, right? So let me copy and paste the string from here. So this is the same URL that we see we saw from um, MongoDB Compass, which points to our uh, a MongoDB server. And then this over here is the name of the database that we would want to work with. So we will name it CrowdSource. And then we pass in this default configuration settings options. Then finally, we have mongoose.connection. Let's say. If Mongo successfully con connects to our MongoDB server, then we are going to print out MongoDB is connected. So we are going to stop our server and start it again. We have MongoDB is connected down here, which means that we are all set. We can now start working with MongoDB. So Like I said, we are going to create some crowd operations for this, our small UI, small front-end application that we have over here, right? And currently, we need, we need data. We need data that is going to be shown over here randomly, right? So we have some text, and they are going to show whether it's positive, negative, or neutral. So we need data in our database. So I have this simple um list of texts that i found from github and some reviews from um toyota camry users so you are going to grab this data let me create place it here so toyota camry dot txt and then we i paste it here so we have a, a lot of text here. So this one says once once broken in mileage is steady at 29 test to MPG. The transmission is jerky and the gas mileage is terrible. So this obviously is a negative 
and sentiment. Then the engine ride and the gas mileage is great, which is a positive sentiment. So now we have our data here and then we'll have to copy and paste or I mean, import this data into Mongo. And when you install Mongo, right, it comes along with some additional tools. One of them is called Mongo Import. And that's what you are going to use. So let me grab our command here. So I'm going to copy and paste this command. So what this does is it selects the database, the crowdsource database, specify the location of the MongoDB database, and then it selects the file, which is Toyota Camry.txt. And it places all the data in a field called text, right? And then the collection name or the, if you are coming from an SQL background, we call it a relation or a table. By in Mongo, we call it a collection. So the collection name is going to be called paragraphs. And once you run this our command, so connected to MongoDB, 115 documents imported successfully, zero documents field. And a document in MongoDB is a single rule right, to a single element in our collection. So now we can go back to our MongoDB Atlas and refresh. And after refreshing, now we, we can see that we have crowdsource. We have our crowdsource database over here. And if we check, we have the paragraphs collection here. And if we check that one too, we can see that we have a whole bunch of data points over here now. And here we have texts, just like we are expecting. The car has terrible, dangerous um, stations and absolutely terrible gas. So now we have our data prepared. It's now time for us to start working with um, MongoDB. So, We'll create our routes. We'll create our models. Let's go back to our, our problem that we have. So now we have a collection in MongoDB called paragraphs which contains all the sentiments that we want to grade, right? And since we want to submit post, um, sentiments to them, we can just call those um, submissions results, right? So we can call them results. And in MongoDB, you are going to have a separate collection called results, which is going to store our, our sentiments. So for example, we have a result which points to a specific paragraph. So we can have a paragraph ID, which is some particular ID. And then we have a um, value. And the value can be either positive, negative, or neutral. So when we query our results collection, this is a sample data that we expect to get, right? So. So that's it. And now since we have two collections, we would want to look at the various crowd operations that we would like to perform on them. So let's go back to our, our application. So over here, with respect to our paragraphs, the only thing that we need over here is to be able to send a request to the paragraph um, model, right? And then receive a random paragraph. 
right? We don't need to update any paragraph. We don't want to delete any paragraph, right? And we don't want to, yeah, we don't want to update and um, delete or, or do whatever. The only thing we want to do is to get a single paragraph. We don't even want to get all the paragraphs. So we can now start writing the various endpoints here. So for a paragraph, I want to be able to make a, um, a request to paragraph endpoint. And what this is going to do is it's going to retain a random paragraph. And now for our results, once I click on positive, neutral, or negative, I want to be able to create a new um, result or a response. I think it will be better to call it response. Responses. I want to be able to create a new response. So that's a, um, a post, that's a create in the crack, right? So I want to be able to create a new response. And the verb is a post request because you are creating a new response. And for the paragraph, we are going to use a get. Also, I would want to be able to view all the responses for a specific um, for a specific paragraph. So if I click the responses button here, I'm going to get a list of all the responses for this particular paragraph, right? So since I'm getting a list of responses, then it's also going to be a get re re um, request. So we get a new, get a list of responses for a specific paragraph. That's a get request. But then since we have some relationship with paragraph, then we would want to pass in extra information here. So we can probably pass in a paragraph ID here as a query parameter and then pass in the ID as a string. Then when I view my list of responses, if there's a response that I do not like, like or I feel it's wrong, then I would want to delete that, that, that response, right? So in that case, we need a delete request. So delete a response, which is a delete. And for updates, we don't want to do any specific updates for this hour. Um, for this our, our program, but supposing we we'd wanted to update a specific response, then it will also be the same response endpoint, but then it's going to be a patch or a put, depending on how we would want our implementation to go. Right, but most, most often it's going to be a patch operation, right? So these are, this is how we are going to, I mean, model our CRUD for our response um, endpoint. And then this is also how we are going to model our CRUD for our paragraph endpoint. And just a side note, what some people usually do is, for example, we can have um, maybe get all responses, right? Or get response for paragraph, something like this, and something like delete response. Then most of the times so I'm going to find this being get, this being get, and this being post. Since post can do like whatever thing that they put and then the, 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 the patch can do, but this shouldn't be the case. Usually we should have just a single part and then we specify all the various 
verbs that you want for that specific part right and in that in that case it becomes very very um, easy and it becomes very clear whether if for example we want to add some new functionalities whether we need to create a new separate part on its own or add, add it over here right so that's just a side note so this we shouldn't do this and usually we should have a single part and then specify all the various verbs either post get a patch or a put or a delete so that's it for the endpoints. so now we know the endpoints that we need we need the paragraph endpoints and then we need the paragraph endpoints and we need the response endpoints so we are going to go back to our code and then increase those um, endpoints so we need a paragraph route and then we need a response route so we can have experience So as we said, we are going to define we are going to define a, a get endpoints for our paragraph route. So router dot get then And we are going to do this for um, error handling. Then response dot status five hundred JSON message and error okay. And over here is so where we are going to have our, our logic for get. Then we are going to also define our routes for re the response. So I can just copy and paste this here. So here we have a, a, a post, we have a get, and then we have a delete. So you are going to do the same thing over here. You have a get, you have a post, and then we have a delete. So we have our routes like set up. So the next thing that we are going to do is how do we now in interact with MongoDB? Right, and Mongo, Mongoose has um, this con concept called schema. By default, Mongo is actually schemaless. So when we have a database, we don't need to specify a rigid structure for our data. But since we are working with code and we want to somehow have an idea of the shape of the data in our databases, then there's the need for us to have um, schemas. So that's what we are going to do here. So in our models, we are going to have paragraph for JS, which will be which which is for our, our paragraph model, and then we have our response dot JS, which is for the response model. So for our paragraph, looking at our database, a paragraph has a single text field so that's what we are going to do over here so here we require mongoose
and then we have a paragraph schema is new mongoose.schema and then here we specify all the fields that we need so over here we know that we need just a single field which is text and then it has a type of string and we can specify some additional values like trim and what this means is it's going to remove all the spaces before after our, our string so we set it to true and that's it so now now that we have our schema we can now create a model and the use of the model is basically to interact with our database right so the schema is just going to give us the blueprint and the model is what you are going to use the model is going to give us an object that we are going to use to interact with our database so here we can create a paragraph model which is a mongoose model and then we name it paragraph So usually what Mongo mongoose does is it's a it lowercase this and then plural and um, pluralize it so here we have paragraph it's going to make it small p and then add an s to it and that's the main reason why when we were creating our um collection in our crowdsource database we made a paragraph so that mongo can easily mongoose can easily identify it and then we pass in our paragraph schema here. And that's it. We have our paragraph model now. So model.exports. And then we have our paragraph. So we can do exactly the same thing. So I'll copy and paste this here in our response. And I'll just change this to response. Change this to response, change this to response, 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 right. So going back to Sublime, we want our response to have the ID for a, for a specific paragraph so that we can know that, okay, this value positive refers to this particular paragraph. So that's what we are going to do here. So here we are going to have our paragraph ID. And then its type is going to be um, an object ID. So by default, when we create a document in Mongo, right, it creates a field called underscore ID. And this has a type of object ID, right? So if you want to reference this object ID, then we are going to have to specify it here as a type. So we are going to have mongoose.schema.types.object ID. And then that's it. So we can specify another field called ref, which is used to reference a specific model. Right, which is here paragraph because you want this paragraph ID to reference this paragraph model. And then finally, I'm going to make it a required field. And then finally, we need a value which should be a string. So we add a value field. Then we have type string required true and then trim also true so that's it for our model so now that we have our models created from our schemas we can now use these model objects to query our databases right so Let's do our first, let's create our first um, endpoints. Let's finish our first endpoint, which is the paragraph endpoint. So here we are going to require our paragraph model. Come 
what goes. Paragraph. So now we have a paragraph model and then we can use this to carry our database. Let's go back to our application. So the goal here is to be able to get a new or a random um, response every time we make we we make a uh, we we submit a response. So once I click positive, I want to get a random um, a new random paragraph, right? So let's go back. So what I can do is. So random response. And like I said, we since we have our um, model here, we can use this to query our database. So we have paragraph model dot. We need a single paragraph. So there's a there's a function called find. Yeah, find, sorry, find one. Yeah. And with this, what, what this is going to do is it's going to look through um, a, a, a paragraph model and then find one. And when we want to sweep, to find a specific um, model that, that, that fulfills a specific um, constraints, they are going to pass in those constraints here. But here, since we don't want it to fulfill a specific constraint, then we are going to just leave it empty. And then I'm going to add this skip. I'll explain what this means in a second. So I'm going to count. So I have a snippet here. Let me just copy it so that we move fast. Then finally, if it's all successful, then I'll, I'll send a response in the form of JSON. So you have a message success. Then our data is the random response. All right, so basically what I did was here was I counted the total number of paragraphs that we have in our database. And then with this count, I can just, um, JavaScript has a math.random, which, which gives you a random value from zero to one. So once I get a random value, I just multiply it by the count and it's going to give me a specific, a random number from zero to the to the length of the count and what the skip does is it's going to skip the first n number of elements right so what i do is i grab i get a random number then i skip all those elements and before that random number and then i i fi I, I finally return that number so this helps us return a random value every time we hit this um, paragraph gets endpoints and then finally, when I get the response, I return it. And if something happens, I'm just going to const log the error and then return a 500, right? So that's, that's it for our paragraph route. So we can go back to application and then now make use of our, our routers. So app.use slash paragraph. Okay, we have our paragraph router. 
we don't have it here so we have to import it paragraph outer is equal to require routes slash paragraph okay. Yeah, so that's that's it. We have our paragraph endpoints now. So we can test we can test this endpoint and see whether it does what exactly what you want it to do. So let's restart our server. In testing, we can use postman or kill. I think kill is faster for me. So let me just terminal. A paragraph and point. So an error occurred. So let's go back and, and debug and see what exactly is wrong. So paragraph is not defined, reference zero. So paragraph model, okay. okay. Hopefully this should work. So we didn't get any response and there's a reason why we didn't get any response. So what paragraph model, what this particular thing does, we have the dot exec that here. What this does is it retains a promise, right? And it's asynchronous. And since it's a promise, we need to await the response. So that's how come we have our async here. So with this async, we can, call and await and then await our response. So once I add an await here, then I'm going to get the actual object. So let's go back in. And as you can see, we have uh, data here. So our message is success and our data. So as I said before, once we have, once we create a new element in MongoDB, it always adds an underscore ID field, and then it assigns a, a random ID to it. And then we have our text, which is this car offers poor driver seat comfort, right? And I think there were some new lines, so we created additional fruit, but now we don't really care about that. So let's make another request and see what it's going to give us. We have another response. Toyota may have computerized their engine and transmission to get better, right? And then we can also make another request the same endpoints and get a random value, which is it floats on the road. Yeah, so now we are get endpoints for the paragraph is done. That's the only thing we need for the paragraph. So it's, it's done. So we can now go back to our front end application and then try to make it work. So I already commented this code out. So I can clear this.
Okay. So it, uh, it seems to be working now. So anytime we refresh our page, we get a new paragraph. So I refresh, I have a new paragraph. The four cylinders does not get good mileage at 40 MPH plus. So this is obviously a negative sentiment, but still these guys are not working. So we need to create the endpoints that is going to allow them to work so that we can now store our, our various responses, whether it's positive, negative, or neutral. So we'll go back to our backend and Start coding the responses to code. So the first one I'm going to code is actually the um, post one, which is for creating a response, right? So like we did with the paragraph, we are going to have a response model. routes oh sorry models models slash routes slash response and then with this response model we can now create a new post a new response so new response is equal to Response model, but it's and we pass in every various values. So you have to pass in a paragraph ID in a second, and then you have to pass in a value also, which is also a string. So going back to Sublime, our uh, create endpoint is post. And usually post has a body, right? So what you are going to do is you are going to pass in a body. And this body is going to contain a value. So it can either be positive or neutral or negative. And then finally, we need to know which particular paragraph we are sending a response to. So just like just like our get endpoints over here, you are going to add an extra query string which is the paragraph ID, right? So this completes our, our endpoints. So we can go back and finish the logic. So what we're going to do is we are going to get our paragraph ID from our, our query string, which is in request.query. And then we are going to get our value from the body, which is request of body. So with this, we can now pass our values. We can pass in paragraph ID, and we can pass in value. And we add our exec, which is re re returns a promise. And then we await the response. And finally, we call. So usually when we are creating or updating, we need to call this dot save. I think, yeah, I think they changed it to box save. But anyway, that's it. New
so our post endpoint looks good. So I think the next thing we can do is test it to see whether it actually works. And if it doesn't work, then we are going to come back and look at what is wrong. And maybe we can add some small error handling here and see if the paragraph ID doesn't exist or value doesn't exist. We are going to return bad request. Just four hundred. Yeah, so that's it. So we can go back to our main application or JS and app dot app dot use response and response for our tab. We can restart our server and test the endpoint to kill. So this time we have a push request. Let's, let's grab an ID. data is equal to and then value
so we didn't get any response from the server. She said, cannot discharge property value of request or body as is undefined. So I think the reason why that happened is I need to pass in the middleware for express, which is express.json, which passes all the request bodies. So I can rerun this guy and rerun our request. And an, an error occurred. And we can check that and see. Okay, so I think, so we can refer to the mongoose. Okay, so I think I was using the wrong gig. So we can create a new response model. Wow. And then we have a new response. Let's see if... So we've successfully created a new response. So I, I was, I, I, there was a name collision between the response and response. So that's why it was messing up. So now we have a new response. We've created a new response, which is positive for the paragraph ID, which is 643, whatever, up to FA. So I think when you go back to our front end, and then we view the responses. It says no responses because there's no get endpoints to view the responses. So that's what I'm going to do next. So now we are done with our post endpoint, which works. So you are going to go to our get endpoint. And what this endpoint is supposed to do is it's going to give us a list of all the responses for a specific paragraph. So we come to our get and we grab the paragraph ID. And then we're going to use our model, which is our response model, but find by ID. But find but where paragraph ID is paragraph ID. And then we
<clears throat> okay. <clears throat> so, so what what we've done is we are using the find method on the response model, right? And what the find method does is it takes a list of where um, a list of fields, right? And here we specify those fields in the where clause. And what this does is it's going to f give us all the response models that has a specific, all the responses that are attached to a specific paragraph, right? And in this case, this is the paragraph we are looking at. So I first averaged 23 MPG during the breaking in period, which is, um, I think is positive. So we sent a positive response. So when we hit this endpoint and then we pass in that, that um, this paragraph's ID, we are going to see the response that we just created um, over here in kill, which is positive. So we are going to restart the server. Then this time we are going to hit the get endpoint. So it seems I submitted a number of them. So let's um, let's submit. So we have three positive ones here. So let's submit a new one and let's make it neutral and then let's see whether we'll have it. So here we have neutral. Okay. So we have three positives and one neutral. And finally, let's submit a negative for it. When we go back and then we check, we have negative here. So when we go back to our front end application and then we view our responses, there's still no response. So Let's just go there and then try to edit it. So the call host 4,000. Okay, so as you can see here, <clears throat> there were three positives in our, there are three positive ratings for the sentiment and then there, there was one neutral and then one negative, right? So we can assume that all the responses over here are going to be average, are going to be average and then they are going to pick. So here, since we have three positives, then it probably means that it's a positive sentiment. So let's let's say that we looked at it again and then we finally realize that the neutral is wrong and then we want to delete it, right? And the delete doesn't work, so we'll have to make it work. It's throwing these errors. So we that's the last thing we want to do in our card. We want to delete our um, a specific response, right? And this doesn't take any query params. It's just going to take the ID for a specific 
response so we can pass in probably pass in a response id in the path then that should be it so we are going to go back to our, our code and then the last bit which is the delete endpoint We are going to get our response ID from the path. Then, as always, we are going to call response model dot find by ID and delete. And we add the exact return and promise for us. And then go to response.json message deleted. So let's just add this guy. So just like the creating with the deleted with the deletion to after we write our query we need to call save to actually do it otherwise nothing is going to happen so here our endpoint is done for the delete so we can start our server again and <clears throat> look at the responses so we can just check here and find the id so the neutral guy has an id of this an id of this so we can just grab this id and send this to kill And this time around, we we'll delete this ID. We'll pass this here. And then send in a delete request. Before I send it, there's one thing I missed out, which is specifying the path over here. So the path is there, the path variable is called response id so we can restart our database <clears throat> and then send a request so an error occurred you can go back and check what so cannot read properties of now reading save so if the deleted response is now we are going to retain a 404 which means that what you are trying to delete doesn't exist and then here we I forgot to pass in the ID. So I'll just copy the ID from here and pass it here. And restart the server. And hopefully this one should work.
which they did. So let's go back and check the error. No matching documents found. Okay. So it's no it's not working currently and I'm trying to figure out why it's not working. That one is also gone. So it's it's actually deleting them, but it's not catching the errors as I'm, I'm expecting. So let me see. Let's try and debug it and see what is wrong. No documents found for query on model response. <clears throat> Let's try another one and see. Next 
so we have a response in. So it was deleting by was throwing errors, kind of weird. After I, I commented this out. So yeah, so that's how we do the delete. So we can go back to our front end and then check the responses. We've deleted all except one. So I think I'll have to refresh this guy. And we have a new one. Sorry. The four cylinders does not get good mileage at 70 mph plus. Okay. So now we are done with our endpoints. We can now send there is we can now send responses. We can now view the responses, right? And then we can now delete the responses. So so from now onwards, what will be left for us is to complete these buttons. I think we have some time on our hands to complete them. So the positive, neutral, and negative buttons. So we can just quickly complete them. So up, submit response. So ride seems comfortable and gas mileage fairly good averaging, averaging 26 city and 30. So this is positive. Great ride, which is positive. I, I would not have purchased this vehicle if I was aware of the actual poor mileage. This is negative. The interior is roomy which is positive. Good acceleration for engine size, which is positive. Nice looking car and good gas mileage, which is positive. And I got 35 highway mileage with AC on and combined 2029 with AC on, positive. Mileage is a little disappointing, negative. So that's, that's how the application it's working so we can go to our database and refresh no i think yeah and all our responses are here now positive 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 negative positive and so on and so forth yeah, yeah so that that brings us to I mean the end of our uh, session so i don't know if anyone has a question or if there is something you would want me to additionally add. all right so thank you amos yeah there's a question for you i'm putting it on the screen now okay. can you see the question It's on your mm -hmm. screen. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can see it. Say, please, that express model, please. Can you explain how it works? Oh, okay. You mean you mean the model I used to build the server? Um, okay, I think you have to reply that question. I think so. Okay, okay, okay. So express express is actually um how do I even say it? It's more like a, a framework or a library, right? And when building servers with Node.js, it can be very hectic. I mean, I don't know whether you've tried playing with the HTTP model and so on and so forth. You have to do a lot of things, how to handle like the streams of data that is coming and so on and so forth. And Express makes it very, very simple. When it comes to routing, you see the way I was able to easily out, add routes without sweat. I just came here. I called Express, um, Express the router, and I just said oh, router dot get, and just write my middleware which will handle this particular part. I can't do this easily with 
node raw node.js i would have to write every single logic that handles this routing right but with but with express i can easily do that without sweat so express is um, a you can call it a framework or a library but it's more like a library because you can add extra things to it depending on your needs right and it makes development of um, node.js applications very easy and another popular one is Next.js, which I believe most of you have heard. Sorry, Next.js, which uh, most of you have, have heard before. And there are a lot of other ones like Koa and so on and so forth. But Express has, has been in the system for a long time and it's, it's, it's still like at the top. So yeah. And if you want to learn more about Express, I mean, you can they have a website, expressjs.com. And they are very simple getting started. Hello World tutorials that I can follow. Oh, another question. So the data was just a chunk of text, which wasn't well formatted, I guess. How did it manage to structure itself into different documents? Oh, okay. That's a nice question. So if let me go back to the data. So everything was line by line, right? So we have this, right? Seems comfortable. It gets great mileage. Being a mother who drive, blah, blah, blah. So each of them is on a line. So what I did was I told Mongo XM, Mongo imports to take every line as a document. So it's like saying that this text file is a CSV. It's a CSV file with only one column and that column is this text. So that's what I specified in the, um, in the Mongo import. So I said, okay, Mongo import, look at this. Um, I want to import data into the crowdsource database, giving the URI MongoDB localhost and place it in the collections paragraphs and I want to use the file called Toyota Camry.txt. Take the file as a CSV file and then put all the fields in, in text in, um, in, a, in, a, in a column code or in a property called text. So it's going to take every line and then check whether they are commerce. That's what CSV um, does. So if they are commerce, or whatever separator that I, I specify, then I can just grab those values and then place them directly inside the database without any hassle. I can just do it. So for example, if I had a file like this, um, let's say students, we have a student name, we have the student age, and then we have a, a course that he's doing a programming language, let's say Java, right? And then let's say I had another name, um, Godin 15 and then C. Okay, what, what would have happened was I would have said the fields are um name, age, and language. And then I would specify the right file and then the right collection. And it's going to do its magic and it's going to pick them out um, easily. Okay, so that's how Mongo imports works. I hope that answers your question. Okay. Yeah, hopefully it does. So I think that's all the questions we have in the chat session. Thank you so much, Amos, for coming. We had a lovely time. I learned new things today. So thank you, thank you. So guys, I dropped them. Um, you can follow Amos on LinkedIn. His LinkedIn handle is in the chat. So just go ahead and connect with him on LinkedIn. If you have any questions, you can as well reach out to him. So thank you once again, Amos. Um, that is all for now. Can we expect your code? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay, so he said that. yes. Can this data import from a text file mm -hmm. archived? with mongoose 
Hmm, I don't think I get your question. Can you elaborate? Okay, so Zedek, go ahead and elaborate on your question so that I can take it for we call it a day. So let's just give him about one minute to do that. So, okay. Um, Zed, go ahead to elaborate on your first question so that Imos can answer that. Okay, so while we're waiting for you, so guys, go ahead and follow Imos on LinkedIn. If you are yet to subscribe to our YouTube channel, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel as well as follow us on Twitch. Um, I don't know if he's typing. Or oh, Zedek, you can do well to reach out to Amos via LinkedIn. I think that would help you. So thank you once again, Amos. We had a great time. We learned something new again. All right, so have a lovely morning, afternoon, or evening. Bye, everyone. All right.